minded in music and history, and how artists, songs, and musical events has, have altered um, historical events. Um, so as an overview, I'm just gonna go over, as many other presentations have, how mu music influences um, people psychologically, um, how Ray Charles has influenced the civil rights movement, <coughs> Woodstock influenced the Vietnam War, and country music has affected the war in the Middle East today. So um, I'm just gonna do an overview because I know a lot of people have done presentations on this, um, but it's important to understand the psychological effects of music um, to understand how music can affect history. Um, so as everyone knows, um, music can send signals um, through the brain um, by neurotransmitters that trigger emotions, and research has found that by the time someone is consciously aware of what music is doing to them, um, the brain has already produced the biochemical um, substances um, to produce a reaction, so it's a very subconscious um, action. And um, the involvement of pop, cult pop culture um, has affected history, um, because pop culture and celebrities have a big impact on people's feelings and decisions. And especially in the United States, um, pop culture is in our lives every day, especially now with social media like TMZ and Twitter. Um, but it even happened in earlier history. Um, people become emotionally connected to people with fame and power, even though they may have never ever met them in their lives. Um, people feel so close to celebrities um, because they identify their favorite celebrities based off of commonalities that they see in them. Um, so like for example, Taylor Swift, um, some girls might admire her because she's tall and they're tall. So that's their like emotional connection to Taylor Swift. So if they see Taylor Swift wearing a nice shirt and they think she looks good, they're gonna be like, oh, she's tall, I'm tall, she looks good, if I buy that shirt, I'll look good. Um, but this can also happen with um, the ideas and beliefs that artists have, um, it can affect their fans and their audiences. So the first historical event that I looked at was the Civil Rights Movement. Um, it occurred from 1955 to 1968. Um, the Jim Crow laws in the South undermined the Constitution and prevented African Americans in voting, property rights, um, and just general freedoms. Um, and I know we all remember in high school seeing the PowerPoints of No Blacks Allowed, Whites Only, um, and the very public leader of the Civil Rights Movement, um, Martin Luther King, his speeches, ideas, and boycotting helped bring national attention to segregation and to stop the injustices. But um, Ray Charles was a very significant music musician of the time. He produced many different genres of jazz, R&B, rock, um, country and his influence of those genres brought broadened his audience. Um, he was a Georgia native and gradually became blind. Um, to start at the age of five and became fully blind at the age of seven. Um, but his piano skills and his voice entranced the United States the whole of the 1960s. Um, a major event that happened with Ray Charles was the Bell Auditorium. It happened in Georgia at Payne College. He was going to perform there, but when he heard that it was going to be um, segregated and only whites could be on the dance floor, he refused to perform. Um, eventually, he was fined $757 for um, breaching his contract, but he refused to play in Georgia after that due to the se um, segregation laws. Um, this was a huge impact because people looked up to him, not just African Americans. He was very popular in general in the United States. Um, so for his stance, it brought a lot of awareness through pop culture of segregation. And once the civil rights movement laws were passed and the Jim Crow laws were ended, he <laughs> came back to Georgia to play Georgia on my mind for the Georgia State Assembly. He um, played this and it became the national song of Georgia.
for the growth in assembly. It was almost seen as a reconciliation between the African Americans and the lawmakers that created the laws to um, for segregation. Um, this was equally as important as the valedictorian performance and um, it created the <coughs> impact for the civil rights movement also. Um, the next event that I looked at was the Vietnam War. Um, the Vietnam War, I'm sure as everyone here, is like between North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Um, the North Vietnam was communist and wanted to take over South Vietnam, and the U.S. Um, was adamantly against that. Um, this was during the Cold War when uh, the U.S. was in disputes with Russia, so the U.S. didn't want any more countries to become communist and side with them. So in 1968, at its peak, Lyndon B. Johnson sent 550,000 soldiers to Vietnam. Um, U.S. citizens were completely against this. They felt that we had no right to be in Vietnam. Um, there were large protests, people burning their draft cards, um, and just a lot of um, disapproval of the government. Um, so an idea from four men about a peaceful free concert um, was to create the idea that peace was still alive. Um, it formed itself into a Woodstock Music Festival it occurred on August, in early August of 1969. An estimated 400,000 people went to Max Yag Yager's Dairy Farm near Bethel, New York, um, to listen to an array of rock and roll bands, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Band of Scotland, The Grateful Dead, um, and it was an outdoor concert. Um, Jimi Hendrix's performance of the Star Spangled Banner on the morning of the last day of the concert is forever symbolized um, as showing the intentions and the mood that Woodstock wanted to portray. Even though it was rock and roll, it had a purpose and a meaning to show the world and the country what music can ha what effect music can have on people. Um, analyzers have stated that Hendrix's guitar mimics, mimics the frightening accuracy of the screams of those who died in Vietnam, which forced the reality of Vietnam War into people's faces and ears. Um, I have a clip of it. I really don't like the way it sounds. It really hurts my ears. Um, but it, uh, it really does sound like bombs crashing. Um, it's a really um, painful mental picture for me. Nothing Man, um, 
was lyrically about people um, facing post-traumatic stress after the days after um, the attacks. And Paradise is actually about the mental processes of a suicide bomber. Um, this album painted a picture of all the different situations that September 11th um, brought onto the United States. Um, and he used a lot of words in his lyrics like hope, faith, blood, fire, rain, um, that really influenced a lot of people. And since it was only released a year after September 11th, it was still very fresh in everyone's mind. <coughs> um, Bruce Springsteen, to go back to the psychological aspect, Bruce Springsteen has been in pop culture forever. He's seen as the um, boy next door and he has a wide range of audience. So his album, he really gave great support to um, fighting the Middle East. Um, not only is it Bruce Springsteen, but also um, country artists in general, Brad Paisley, Toby Keith, Carrie Underwood, um, they all have songs about um, supporting our troops. Um, I have Chicken Fried by Zach Brown Band that um, has lyrics that perfectly go with um, their ideas about supporting the Keeping it in everyone's 